Good morning, everybody. I'm Beth Davis, and welcome to Teachable Tuesday. I am so excited to be with you, as always, and get in God's Word. So um, grab a Bible. I hope you've got it close by, because we are going to do some digging in the Gospel of John today. So would you pray with me? In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Come, Holy Spirit. Come, Holy Spirit. God, we center ourselves once again on you, place ourselves in your presence. We know that you are with us always, but at times throughout our day, we let our gaze drift from you. And so now we fix our gaze again on you, Lord, and ask you um, to fill us with hope and with joy. And I ask in a special way, God, that you would give each and every person who watches uh, this Teachable Tuesday today a special understanding and experience of your personal love for them. Holy Spirit, fill us with your love and presence. And we pray this in the name of Jesus. Amen. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. So I don't know about you, but I'm the kind of person that finds a song or an artist or show and I watch it on repeat. Anybody else? <laughs> I listen to the same artist on repeat. Sometimes I listen to the same song like all day long, all day long. Or I'll get on a kick where first thing in the morning I listen to the same song over and over again. I've been doing that with a uh, a new song, well, new to me song called I Will Rest, put out by Bethel. And the words are all so beautiful, but in particular, there's this line in the chorus that says, Jesus, Jesus, how I trust you, I will take you at your word. And I've just been sitting with that. I've been thinking about that. Jesus, Jesus, how I trust you, I will take you at your your word. So that's what I want to talk about this morning. I want to talk about believing God, taking him at his word, uh, a very unpopular word or a word that many of us struggle with. I want to talk today about trust. How do we trust God? How do we believe God? How do we take him at his word? So to do that, we're going to um, camp out this morning in the Gospel of John chapter 14. So grab a Bible, flip it open with me. We're going to start right at verse 1. Um, because the whole thing is just too good. Now, a little context. Um, Jesus is at the Last Supper, and this uh, chapter begins his discourse at the Last Supper. So he's got lots of things to say to the apostles, to his disciples at the Last Supper, all right before um, the agony in the garden and his, his suffering and his crucifixion. So he's going to say a lot of important stuff in these next few chapters. But we're going to pick up chapter 14, verse 1. Jesus said, Do not let your hearts be troubled. Full stop. <laughs> we can't even go on from that very first line. Do not let your hearts be troubled. I have had to sit with that verse and, and meditate on it because he's not saying, don't worry about it, it's not a big deal. He's saying, do not let your hearts be troubled, which means that things are gonna come that trouble us. But it's our responsibility as believers in Jesus to not let our hearts be troubled. And how do we do that? We're gonna talk about that in just a minute. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house, there are many dwelling places. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? I want to pause right there. We're only at verse 2. Can you believe it? It's already this good. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? So Jesus is saying, if it weren't true, would I lie about it? <laughs> Am I a liar? No, I wouldn't lie about it. So if I told you, it's true. Verse 3, and if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again. And I will take you to myself so that where I am, there you may be also. And you know the way to the place where I am going. 
I just, I love to imagine Jesus in the, all his tenderness and, and passion and conviction, you know, emphasizing certain words of the scriptures. And, and for me, in verse four, this word is, you know, and you know the way to the place that I'm going. But the disciples, right, they don't know. In fact, Thomas speaks up in verse five. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know the way. <laughs> How can we know the way that you're going? And haven't you felt like that? It, it seems simple. And, and, and the Lord, at times when you pray, he, he speaks in this um, beautiful poetry in the scripture. Or um, he, he gives you promises or, or hope but not necessarily the answer that you're looking for, not necessarily a resolution in real time. And, and Thomas is frustrated. Myself, I, I've prayed the words like, speak plainly, Lord, no more parables, no more riddle, just tell me how it is. Quit saying, you'll see. <laughs> I'm sure you've got your own version of that. But, but Thomas is saying what I think many of us have felt and said in prayer, that that we want to know exactly what God's gonna do, exactly when he's gonna do it. And instead the Lord is, is promising that we already know. Well, how, how do we already know? Well, let's keep reading. Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. Verse six, I am the way and the truth and the life. And for many years, I sat with that scripture and I thought, well, those are really beautiful titles, right? Beautiful concepts. I'm the way, the truth, and the life. But to be honest with you, I always thought they were kind of random. Like, why are they even in the same sentence? What, is that, what does that mean? Well, Jesus is first addressing Thomas's question. He's saying, how do we know where you're going? How can we possibly know the way? And Jesus says, I am the way. I am the way, meaning that we're not following a path. We're following a person. What We want a path, right? We want to know exactly the next step to take. Uh, but Jesus wants a relationship. So he is the way. What does it mean to follow the way? It means to keep our eyes fixed on him, to walk in step with him because we're in a relationship, constantly conversing about our situation and, and um, sharing with him the concerns of our hearts and, and just conversing with him like a friend, inviting him into the everyday movements of our life and our heart. So Jesus is offering us not a path, but himself, a person. I'm the truth. And this is one that I've, I've really been um, leaning into in my own prayer. When Jesus says, I am the truth, what he's saying implicitly is that he's not a liar. Now, I don't know if you've ever followed through on your fears, but this was an exercise that I took to in prayer recently. Um, because it, I, if you name your fear, you, you have to go backwards, right? So let's say I have this desire of my heart and and it's never gonna happen, or I thought God promised me, but no, it didn't come to fruition. Well, if we back that up, that would make God a liar, wouldn't it? If we prayed into something, if we've shared our hearts, if, if our desires grow and God is purifying them, we have to believe that he is the truth. Now listen, that doesn't mean we're gonna get everything we want when we want it. Many, many times God's plan for our lives looks very different than our plan for our life. But ultimately he plants desires in our hearts and it's his joy, his delight to bring those desires to fruition in and through him, whatever that means, whatever that looks like. So he is the truth. He wouldn't lie to us. If he promises in scripture that um, he formed us in our mother's womb, well, let's back that up. If he formed us in our mother's womb, he, he thought about us. He desired us. He wanted us. He created us from the very beginning. We were already chosen. So let's work backwards from our fears. We feel alone. Well, Jesus says, I will not leave you orphaned. So let's back that up. Just because we feel alone 
doesn't mean that we are alone. We've got to start believing the words of God, the words of Jesus in scripture more than we believe our feelings and our circumstances. You've got to root yourself in the truth. And Jesus is the truth. We've got to remind ourselves again and again, he is the truth. He's not going to lie to me. He's never going to leave me alone. He has a good plan for my life. You got to start speaking to yourself, agreeing with God's true words about you and about your life and about his plan for your life. So I am the way, the truth, and finally, the life. Every time I think about Jesus, the life, I think about the Gospel of John 10.10 10, where um, Jesus says, I came that they might have life and have it abundantly to the full until it's overflowing, like abundance, right? That's the kind of life that he wants us to have. Not some second rate life, an abundant life. And um, I, I wanna give you a new way to think about this verse, this John 14, six, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. What if instead of three random titles of Jesus, what if instead hidden in that verse was an equation. What if the way plus the truth equals life? So when we follow Jesus, when, when we walk with him on the path with the person and we listen to his voice, we believe the true words that he speaks about us and to us. Um, so the way and the truth from that comes life. Walk with Jesus, listen to Jesus, and you'll have life in him. Amen. Would you pray with me? In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Precious Lord, I thank you that, that you show us the way because you're on the way with us. You are the way. And I thank you, Jesus, that you speak truth over us. Even when, um, other things that people may say uh, might feel more true. Even when our emotions, when they're out of control, they might feel true. You are the truth. And God, right now in prayer, I ask you to speak truth to every person watching this Teachable Tuesday. Speak a true thing over them. Remind them of a truth that you need them to remember. God, give us the grace to believe the truths that you speak about us and to us. And Lord, I thank you that, that you are life, that the world offers um, many other options and, and promises of life, but you, Lord, are life. And, and we, we stake our claim in you, Jesus, for eternal life and for life here on earth. We pray all this in the name of Jesus. Amen. In the name of the Father, Son. Holy Spirit. Amen. Thanks for being here, guys. Can't wait to see you next week.